the electric bicycle. While it may be trending now, the very first e-bikes date as far back as the 19th century with Ogden Bolton Jr. having one of the first patents in the US in 1895. It was a rear hub motor design with the battery housed in the center of the frame, which is very similar to a lot of modern bikes today, including the Hemiway. Say hello to the Cruiser. This long range fat tire e-bike boasts an 840 watt hour Samsung battery capable of traveling over 60 miles on a single charge. And with a 750 watt motor, you can really push the limits when going gets rough. Ever since my first experience with e-bikes back at the AIM Expo in 2019, I knew I had to get my hands on one. I actually bought a converted mid-drive mountain bike this past year, but it's become more of a project that has collected dust. So when Hemiway reached out wanting me to review one of their top bikes at the time, how could I say no? Since taking my delivery, they have just announced their newest lineup, including the Cobra, which boasts a beefy full suspension setup and over a thousand watts of mid-drive fun, which all of these will be linked down below, but hopefully I get my hands on one of these in the future because it is much more my style. But back to the cruiser, right out of the box, assembly was straightforward, and the only difficult part was getting all of the protective foam stripped away, which I'm not complaining because there wasn't a mark on the thing. I went ahead and threw on the bars, which conveniently already had the controls mounted, followed by the front tire, which let's just take a moment to appreciate how badass these fat tires look. I think my favorite part of the design is actually the rack they include. You don't see many with this style, and the wood platform really pops against the dark powder coated metal. I personally opted out of installing the fenders mainly for looks, but I did install the headlight and taillight which were surprisingly bright. Overall, I'd rate the setup a 9 out of 10 and most people should be able to do this with ease. Now for the fun part. I'm not gonna lie, this wasn't my first ride. I did actually take a few laps around the yard the night after assembling it, and I will say the throttle was quite jerky and somewhat awkward. Thankfully, you can tweak dozens of different settings in the onboard computer, so I'll leave a link to a video down below which explains the different modes and adjustments you can make. I chose to tame down the initial torque curve and added a few more assist levels which really brought this bike to life. You can also adjust the top speed which I found out later so today we were capped at around 22 miles per hour. Which doesn't sound like a lot on paper especially if you're a motorcycle guy like me but trust me on a bicycle it's plenty fast. That's a really good cruising speed though. This thing is smooth. Now let's see if we can get that fast with pedal assist. Oh yeah, there we go. The biggest thing I took away from these first few road miles was the Hemiway stability. I'm sure the fat tires help a lot with that, but this thing feels planted. It goes where you point it and everything felt tight and well put together. There are a few things that I would like to see changed. Number one, these grips are terrible and look like something that a boomer would put on his 80s chrome Harley Davidson. And I can't say I love the look of the bend, but it is functional and with me being a taller guy, it puts them right where they need to be. At the end of the day, this is a cruiser style, so I can't really knock off points for that. But one thing I did notice was how far forward the seating position felt. I'm sure that will only be a problem for the taller folk, and you can probably adjust the seat or get a curved post to eliminate that feeling. But apart from those small gripes, I was having a blast. Time for a little off-road in here. We are five miles in right now, 4.7, 
and still on full battery. It's mostly been pedal assist. I've used the throttle here and there, but that's the biggest thing that I love about e-bikes is just getting started. It's nice to hop on the throttle, especially if you're in a tight situation or on an incline, that's where this really comes in handy. Because for me, I still wanna get exercise while I'm riding this thing. Go ahead and shut it down for a bit and enjoy the views. Now for the fun part, getting out of here. Let's see if I can do a pivot turn, dirt bike style. <laughs> That's so handy. Yeah, I definitely don't see myself getting out of that, but thankfully, this does have a walk mode, but I'm just gonna use the throttle and kinda walk my way up here. And that's nice because this thing is definitely far from light. Maybe I'll put a little bit of weight on the rear. And we're up. You just don't realize how much ground you're covering and it's a weird feeling if you've spent any amount of time on a regular bicycle. I hadn't even broken a sweat yet and had covered quite the distance. While the road riding was fun, my happiness begins off of the beaten path, so we headed down by the river to test it out on some trails. Time for some off-roading. Pretty sad, not only that you litter, but you have a box TV in 2021. Times are hard out here. I'm not gonna lie. I was extremely surprised how well this did off-road. From roots to logs, jumps, hill climbs, the cruiser felt solid and the forks offered plenty of travel. Not once did I even come close to bottoming it out, which kind of blew me away because at this price point, I feel like you get a lot for your money. For around $1,500, you can buy one of these things brand new, shipped to your door, and for a price comparison, that's about as much as the electric scooter I reviewed a few weeks ago. Oh, sh And that right there is where I commend Hemiway for offering an affordable product that makes a machine like this available to a larger market.
Not everybody wants to spend $5,000 plus for an all-out pro model e-bike, so this really bridges the gap. And in my eyes, the compromise is minimal. Unless you plan on doing some hardcore single track or downhill racing, the Cruiser does the job just fine. And if you are searching for something a little more capable, I'm sure their new models will blow you away. God, this bike is fun. Oh. Overall, I'm really amazed on how well this thing handles. It's marketed as more of a cruiser, but you can really get out here and do some gnarly stuff. Oh, I just sent a pretty big jump. Yeah, this thing is sweet. I definitely feel like you get a lot for the money. Yeah, that's good clean fun right there. Overall, we're almost 11 miles in and we've only gone down one bar and we just went down that bar. I was cruising well over 20 miles an hour to get here. That's definitely the hardest setting for the battery. So once I get all the settings dialed in, I think this is gonna make a really great machine. But out of the box, so far I'm pretty impressed. It's doing great. Overall, I have nothing but good things to say about the Hemiway so far, and I look forward to racking up some miles and seeing what kind of abuse this bike can take. I think I'll go for a distance run next, but other than that, let me know what you would like to see me do. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it's not a dirt bike! <laughs> That was not a good idea, was it? How to clean your e-bike 101. <laughs> this thing is balanced really well too. Look at that. Well, that pretty much wraps things up. So if you are new, consider subscribing, leave a like if you enjoyed. And if you wanna buy one of these things, be sure to use my link down below. If there's anything you can expect from this channel, it's more e-bike content in the future. But until then, enjoy life and adventure daily.